The West Highland Way. A breathtaking adventure through the rugged and majestic landscapes of Scotland. Starting just outside of Glasgow, the trek navigates through dense forests, charming Scottish villages, towering mountains, and stunning locks. We completed this trek at the end of May and had near perfect weather the entire time. In this part one, we start in Milgave, venturing north over four days to Tindrum, providing tips, our thoughts, and helpful information along the way. Join us. We are traveling butler. I am the butler. We... No, she's not. <laughs> We are at the West Highland Way starting point in Melgai. We are 24 hours, or just a little less, upon arrival from Chicago to London, to Glasgow, to now Melgai. And we are about to get started on the trip. So we are using a luggage transfer, training of travel light, and we will keep you posted on how that goes along with the trek as we get started on this 95 mile adventure on the West Highland Way. That's officially started in 1980. So first long distance trek in Scotland. So we're officially on the trek, making our way up to Drimmon today, total of 12 miles we're going to add on. We left at about 8.30 to get on the trek this morning, so we're in the end of May, May 24th. So far the weather has been okay, mostly cloudy, about 50 degrees, and we are excited and kind of nervous, at least I'm nervous. <laughs> Um, I've looked it up and about 36,000 people do the full trek every year, about 100,000 get some point on the trek. So it's a little fun fact for this little segment. So we're about an hour into our trek on day one and we came across our first camper. So there are free camping all throughout the trek. There are definitely certain areas that you cannot, but for the most part, it's free camping. We are not. We are gonna be staying in hotels and bed and breakfast along the way. So stay tuned for more on that. We're about eight kilometers from Drimmon and we've come across some wildlife here on West Highland Way, some lovely cute sheep, our second batch of sheep that we've actually come across and the sun has decided to come out today which is fantastic, it feels great. Five minutes ago, we were walking down a road, literally a street, and then all of a sudden we take a turn and we have this magnificent view. It's just crazy and beautiful. never 
too far away from civilization. So busy roads, lots of traffic, villages, always with a near shot. You'll find these gates along the trek. Don't be intimidated like I was. Just give it a good pull to open and step through. Just make sure that you close it behind you because a lot of livestock around. made it to Drummond. We are currently in Town Square. I am doing a little bit of stretching and as we wait for our Airbnb to get ready. So just to sum up the day, pretty perfect weather-wise, cloudy, no rain, so we'll count that as good. Sun is breaking through every now and then, which is great. We ran into a couple people other along the way, probably about a dozen or so other trekkers along the 12 miles that we completed today. Lots of sheep, we did see some cows, lots of birds chirping along the way, which was great. Lots of bugs. <laughs> we definitely swarmed through some bugs. <laughs> uh, we got to Drimmen about an hour ago, so I think we did a total of about five and a half hours it took us. Had some great lunch, sandwich and soup, it's pretty tasty. I would say overall, the quality of the trail itself was pretty decent. We did a little bit of mixture walking along roads as well as some gravel. Lots of greenery. We were surrounded by forest beyond forest, so that was pretty great to see. And then all of a sudden we would be in, surrounded by pastures. It was great. We did a really thorough job training for this. I would say every weekend for the past six weeks, we did some sort of walking and we built up our tolerance that way and our endurance that way. I will say I did get tired towards the end and I was quite looking forward to getting to our town and where we're going to be for the night but I probably could have kept walking. And that's a good thing because tomorrow is going to be longer. Good morning from day two. Last night we stayed in Drimmen. We stayed at a great guest house called Brayside. We had breakfast included this morning as part of our package. Everything went smoothly with our luggage transfer. It was there waiting for us. Designated spot, it was great. This morning, we are, it's a lot warmer than we thought. I already changed to lighten my layers a little bit this morning. We are headed to Rahmahala, Ramala. Again, apologies if I mispronounce it, but the sun is shining. It was fairly easy to keep our path and find the trail this morning, so that was great. And looking forward to a long hike today. up and prepping for this trip trek we were warned about the midges midges um, another little small bug smaller than mosquitoes and probably an itchier bite than mos mosquitoes so when we got here we were recommended to buy smidge which is a spray that you spray on and rub so hopefully that will protect us as much as possible from these midges we're also in the late spring where they're supposed to be in lower numbers so hopefully we don't see as many or run into the problem. Most if not all of you have probably heard of Loch Ness so as we approach we're actually coming up to Loch Lomond which is one of the largest in Scotland. You probably see a little bit over my shoulder in the distance and then like the next this afternoon we'll be walking right alongside it.
As promised, a bigger, better view of Loch Lomond as we are now two hours into day two. And it just keeps getting better. The scenery is fantastic. The video probably isn't doing it justice. Along the trek, you'll see this marker, which means you're on the right path. <laughs> so you'll see it paired with different ways. Uh, there's the John Muir way, the Rob Roy way, but this is the marker that's gonna help you find your way. And they're pretty well spaced in between as well, so they're quite helpful. Okay, so made it to the top of, or most of the top of Conning Hill. Panting a lot, sweating a lot, refill the water, but great views, great views. So we finished Conic Hill, which was quite the adventure, to say the least. It was definitely harder than I thought, probably the most challenging thing we've done so far, and it's only day two, so fingers crossed. Um, we came down and we are now in Bamaha. Uh, we stopped at the village shop to get some lunch, and we we're just kind of relaxing for a little bit, enjoying our lunch by Loch Lomond. And yeah, enjoying the scenery, taking it in before we head out again for the second half of our day. Well, day two is now officially complete. It was quite the long day, probably our longest record trek hike to date. I think it ranked just above 15 miles. It took us about seven and a half hours according to my Fitbit of just trekking, not including our break for lunch. Saw a lot. We had Conic Hill, which was well worth it. Definitely some great views, especially compared to yesterday. We were definitely more in the wilderness a little bit. Well, definitely more panoramic and scenic views. A little bit more off the beaten trail, not so much on the roads. There still were parts on the roads. Uh, we walked a lot of this afternoon alongside the lovely Lake Loman behind me. Not looking forward to tomorrow, but I guess it's gonna be a shorter day, which is something to look forward to. And we have dinner reservations at our hotel tonight that we're going to hopefully enjoy and get some good sleep because we got at least 11 miles, I think, ahead of us tomorrow. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. on our day three of our trek. We are headed out about 
8 a.m. like I just said. I'm a little tired. Didn't sleep as well as I thought I would last night. But we have about 11 miles to go today. We're catching a ferry to where we're staying, so that should be a fun little twist on our adventure. We should be walking most of the morning right along like Lac Lomond. So it's supposed to be a little bit twisty. We're taking the low route. More challenging route according to our guidebook. So we'll see how that turns out. So the guidebook that we've been using, we've been referencing on and off throughout this trip so far. Um, it gives a great time reference as far as like how long and distance it should take you, what to expect along the way, the guide markers. So far it's been pretty helpful. There's been a couple discrepancies between what we've actually walked versus what it says we're going to walk. For instance, yesterday it said we were going to walk about 15 to 16 miles and we walked about 18. So that was the first time that it was off. So we'll see if that pattern continues or if it's more accurate for the next couple days. To give you an idea, this is what the trail has been looking like. This is the, about the width of it the whole way. And you're gonna get some roots, some rocks, some bridges, some down trees, lots of obstacles, but you're low, you're close to the water. So this is the guidebook that we used, The Greatest Treks of Scotland, Trekking the West Highland Way. In it is some really great tips like I've already talked about, but specifically it also breaks down. So for instance, this morning, heading out on day three, for just trying to decide between the, the low route and the high route, it actually gives a really good breakdown of like what point in the walk you're gonna be at a fork in the road. And if you want this way, you go this way. <laughs> so it was really great tips to know. And it, the, street or road, the track wasn't as greatly labeled as I would have liked, so this really came in handy for that. There are other books. This is the one that we got, so do your due diligence and figure out, I mean, I'm not saying this is the best one because this is one of the only ones that we looked at, so it's helpful so far. One thing I would highly recommend is coming prepared with layers. We came and are doing the trek at the end of May and the weather's been fairly good, actually on the warmer side than I anticipated. So having some short sleeve options, long sleeve options. We also have windbreakers and I brought off, also brought a fleece. So just think ahead, think about the weather and remember that when you're walking and trekking, you're naturally gonna get warmer. So just be prepared. We also brought hats. Uh, beanies as well as I bought, uh, brought a baseball cap as well. Cell phones. We bought a SIM card in Glasgow. We've been on the three network and we've had primarily 3G and 4G network providing services the entire trek so far. It has dropped out a couple times here and there. I will say that most of the places that we have stopped, whether for lunch or for a break, does did have free Wi-Fi, so that was also helpful to jump on and check in anything and be in communication with everybody.
Now we just have to get there. We're so close. So we're wrapping up day three. We were supposed to and wanted to stay in Inverness, which is another two miles or so up the trek. However, everything was booked. So instead, we're staying across the lake, river, lock um, in another place. And in order to get there, we need to take a ferry and you have to raise the ball on the pole and the ferry will come every hour. So someone already beat us to it. So they raised the ball for us. So now we're just waiting for a ride. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> By far the most challenging part I would so agree. far along the trek. And again, there's a discrepancy in the mileage. So according to the books and the maps, it said about 11 to 12 miles and the total was? Mm, 16 and a half. <laughs> a lot of up and down, flat, up and down, flat. You had to pay attention to what you were doing a lot of the time. If you misstepped, you could severely injure yourself on the rocks or fall. Uh, I mean, the, the trail itself was also very narrow, so even more reason to pay attention to where you're going, let alone the rocks, the trees, the roots, and all of the above that you have to trek around or over or under, <laughs> whichever you prefer. The scenery was fantastic, though. I mean, we walked- Towards the end, yeah. Yeah, we were walking along Lake Loman for the majority of the day. Like, there were parts where we were in the forest and you really couldn't tell, but I mean, it changed a lot throughout the day. Forest, lake, um, beautiful fields of bluebells, which now we know are bluebells. They're beautiful and they're just endless. That was pretty cool to see. Tons of different trees. That was pretty neat. Like the first half, you couldn't really see much because there was just so much tree coverage that you couldn't see like much of the lake or across into the uh, the highlands at all. So it was more watch where looking you're at yeah, <laughs> watch where you're walking and look at the trees. It's definitely tiring. Did a lot of stretching when we got back. Ready for tomorrow, maybe. It's gonna be another long day. So according to the books, it says 15 miles. So see how that goes. <laughs> see how. Hopefully it's not are. as challenging. It's more just a straight path instead of crazy rocks. Yeah, some of the other truckers that we've spoken to along the way today said that today was the hardest day. I think I've read that too. You've read that? Yeah. So we'll see. So hopefully we got the hardest done with. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And see what tomorrow brings. Good morning from day four. We are almost to our halfway point. We're about 20 minutes in this morning after taking the ferry back from Aldui Hotel to get back to the trek itself. And we are making our way to Invernon, which remember we couldn't stay at because it was booked. So it's a little bit cloudy more of a day, more cloudy of a day today. Chance of rain, definitely cooler. Still pretty great views. Whew, I'm already tired. So far this walk has been pretty picturesque, a little bit up and down. However, you can still see there's some electrical grid lines and electrical power that kind of interrupt it. Uh, rumor has it that they are going to be replacing that when, I'm not sure, but it's all gonna move underground. So it hopefully will make it even more picturesque. So we're about an hour in, and this is the campsite that we probably should have stayed at last night. And however, it was booked. So the rain's picking up a little bit, so we're probably gonna put a pause in the filming. However, this is a great place, and it sounds like we're going to stock up on some snacks and water, because there's not many more places to get that the rest of today.
water. So a little bit about water on our trek. We both carried about two of these. I have one filled here and one full in my backpack. Maddie's got two on his backpack. And I think we've been fairly good. We haven't really run out without running into some sort of drinking water. A lot of the settlements or villages that you're gonna pass will have fillable stations. Uh, we really haven't even need to use those that much. We've been fairly lucky and done fairly well with water. Not as lucky, but prepared with the water. half hours into day four. How is this meeting my expectations? Well, it's a mixed bag. There's definitely times where I'm like, oh, this is going okay. I can keep doing this. And then there's moments where I'm like, I don't want to do a single thing. Give me a spa day. <laughs> Give me a massage and a hot shower. Right now we're just a little bit of a climb coming down. So my knees are a little angry at me, but so far so good. Day four, Offici In the books. <laughs> officially halfway through this lovely adventure through the West Highland Way. We are in Tindrun, Tydrun. We came from Aldui this morning. How'd you feel it went today? You definitely felt like you were in the Highlands now. The first hour or two was so-so and then the trees opened up and you were out in the middle of the 
highlands yeah, and rolling was, meadows yeah sheep it was just beautiful the trail was a little bit wider today um, yeah compared to yesterday i mean it's much easier off. to walk on this morning was still a little narrow but yeah the rest of the majority of the day was definitely a lot wider there was some nice flat stretches where it wasn't like up and down up and down so it was like miles at a time and we were just kind of strolling along together which was kind of nice yeah. walk next to side by side yeah um, I will say the last like three miles for me were a little bit more on the like I'm exhausted I want to be there by now so I'm... probably because there wasn't much to see there was just like a small trail with trees next to each other you couldn't really see much there I, wasn't yeah. anything to take your mind off anything and I kind of felt like it would come to a pass and we thought that we were almost there and then like oh no keep going <laughs> oh no yeah. keep going so that kind of switched it up in my head a little bit too and we didn't stop for lunch right so I mean we did get snacks and we ate along the way we did get that snacks helped. at we Invernon stopped. we should know that at the campsite in Invernon the trail goes behind the camper the campground so there's a little bit of confusion of, of signage so if you hit the shop you went too far so you want to turn right before you get to that shopping area and it kind of backs up and follow the road up there's a, like a makeshift trail don't take that <laughs> yeah there was a little trick stay on the road <laughs> yeah once we were on the trail we yeah. <laughs> you, you definitely knew you were on the trail yeah there was some signage but it was a little bit later so there was fewer signage i felt like right leaving Invernon. yeah I mean, the weather was great. I mean, we did run into rain this afternoon. Rain. It rained this morning a little bit. Yeah. And we actually had to pull out the ponchos for a little bit, but that only lasted maybe like five minutes, if that. Tomorrow we're going to the Bridge of or Orchi. Orchi, Orchi, something like that. Only seven or eight miles away. Hopefully. So it'll be a nice, relaxing walk. Hopefully. <laughs> Uh, there wasn't that big of a discrepancy today. We were counting on about 14 to 15 miles. And I think our GPS in Strava said it, it was like 16.1. Yeah. So it wasn't as big of a discrepancy as it was the past few days. Still exhausting. <laughs> yeah. I'm still tired. Lots of stretching. Definitely more of a town. We're in a hotel lodge right alongside a main highway, main road. So we definitely are seeing more people and more traffic, hearing more traffic mm -hmm. than we have, I think, the last two nights. Yep. So I'm interested and excited to see what tomorrow's short day will bring. Hopefully some relaxation in the afternoon. A lot more highlands yes. coming up. Yes. Feeling a little bit more in, in Scotland. As you probably saw from the videos you've seen earlier or right now, that probably midday, it was very picturesque and mm -hmm. idyllic. It was amazing to see. And the sun's coming up. Yay! <laughs> Alright, catch you tomorrow. Bye!